Hi, welcome to the series. We're gonna dive in to make this picture look like this picture. And it will take three, three videos to get to it. But today is the easiest one. So let's dive into it right now so we can really process and learn how to tell our story. All right, let's go. Hi, I'm Jetta Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and this is the place where we talk about macro and landscape photography, post-processing equipment, behind the scenes, you name it, and we will chat about it. This tulip is inspired by Jackie Kramer. If you have not seen Jackie Kramer's work, go down below because I am dedicating this series to her. She's an amazing photographer. She was on the Macro Chat Live show that we had. If you don't want to know what the Macro Chat Live show, then you gotta subscribe to my channel. Now this video is how I shot the tulip. I'm talking about the what I did to get what I needed for the post-processing in my camera. Then we will dive into some basics of post-processing, getting it ready for the second video, which is really diving in. But I feel like you should take these little increments and go from here until the very end. In order to get what I wanted, which is different areas in focus, I had to shoot them differently. I also shot in different lighting conditions to get what I wanted. So you'll see this one right here, this one. I shot for the tulip to be in focus right in here, but also to have the lighting kind of off to the side. This is natural light, but I positioned the tulip in the direction where the natural light would kind of hit to the side. And that's what gives you these um, depth and uh, nice focus of what the detail is in the flower. And that's what I like to do. So I wanted to get that. I also love the way the tulip itself is formed, but down below, I don't like the leaves. So this is focused here. The next shot was really focusing on the leaves. And I didn't care about the flower at the time. I was just shooting for the leaves. I wanted this detail with the backlighting of the leaves in this beautiful flower. So that's what I did here. Because the this side right in here, I'll get up closer so you can see, it was blowing out. See how that's kind of blown out? So I said, which flower do I want? A little bit better area in the side. And so what I did was I went ahead and I'll show you. This has a little bit more dimension on the side, so it's not totally blowing out. And I knew I could kind of fix this in post also. So I grabbed this flower to have just this area right here within the image. So these are the three that I used and I merged them into Photoshop. So let's go ahead and do that now. Even though this was shot on a tripod, things move. So I'll click on the top one and do a shift click. And now they're all selected. And I'm gonna go over and click on auto align layers. And I'm just gonna pick auto and then let Photoshop work its magic. So now you can see that if I click on alter option on the first image, that one is there. Then here's the next image and here is the next image. I wanna make it easy for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change up and just focus on my leaves. I guess I'll work down and up. So let's go and move this, whoops, we only want one. I'm gonna move this down to the front. So you can see right now, this is the image that has the details of the leaves. So next I'm going to go to the this part here. And this one is where it has the detail on the side. So I'll actually, because that's a small little area that I want to work with. So now 
I'm focused on this area and this area. I like this in this image. So what I'll do is I'm going to put a mask and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the mask. I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to do a uh, inverse. So I'm going to do command control I and now the mask is black. So I can't see this image at all, but I already know that I want the flower in focus and the side. I really like the way the light was hitting on the side of this area so I just painted using a paintbrush I'm gonna put this to white and I'll start off this should be good and I have opacity let's do that hundred percent and my flow should be hundred percent when I'm not doing the sides so I'm just gonna bring this all in everything that I want. Now this is just the middle part. Now I'm going to take my flow down just a little bit and I'm going to reduce and I'm going to get up close to this and I'm just going to start painting in the flower and get the color that I want. And then this is kind of the tricky part. What I want to do is bring my paintbrush and I want to kind of do it like halfway. And I don't want the hardness. Let's put up the hardness just a little bit because I don't want it bending off. And then, no, actually I want the hardness less. Let's do the hardness a little bit less. Let's make it a softer brush, 36%. And I'm going to just paint in some depth. Now I'll play with this a little bit more in detail just to get that depth. And then now the last part that I want to work with is see how this is blown out. So we're going to bring that in. You can see the definition. So let's go ahead and add that image, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a mask and I'm going to do control command control I and inverse it so now you can't see the any of this image on this layer and I'm going to paint again with white but I have 33% so let's just see what happens because all I care about is just bringing that line in to so there's some definition there we go. That looks good. Okay. In Photoshop, the tools are usually to the left. I bring everything to my right. It's just easier for me. I always know that when I post process, everything's just dragged over to the right. I'm not going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So everything over here is my workspace. And that's why it may look different from what you have in your Photoshop area. Let's go ahead and crop. I want to look at the composition now and crop. And as I'm cropping, you can see that the top is just, to me, it's a little too uh, tight. So I'm gonna pull it up. And that should be, that looks good. I might make adjustments later, but for now, let's just go for that. Now you can see that I have some checkered boards right here. Basically, that is where you don't have any pixel information. But that's okay. What I want to do is I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to set this to white and I'm actually going to paint and I will do a flow of 100 opacity 100 and I'm just going to paint. Let's see. I'm going to paint white. Let's see. And I'm just going to kind of around and how you can see if you do an alt option you can kind of see what you're painting so if you want to make it even do the alt and option and just kind of see what's going on to make it even because I do plan to post process for sure but I do want the background a little bit even okay 
Okay, so now I'm ready. Oh, I don't want this down below. So let me erase that, the eraser tool. We're just gonna erase that off. There we go. Okay, that's good. What I like to do is if there's any major cleaning up, I will do that now. Um, things that are distracting to my eye. Now I know I'll come back and do this again, but things that are really, really distracting to my eyes. Okay, so now for your homework. This is what you're going to do. You're gonna pick a subject, and hopefully it's a flower because flowers always bring smiles to our faces and the smells are amazing. And you're gonna pick out of that flower or your subject, you're gonna pick it with your eyes what are the important parts that you really love and you're gonna photograph them. So you may have one, two, three, four, five different things within the main subject that you really like. Make sure your background is pretty mellow and doesn't have a lot going on to it because in two weeks we're gonna meet up and I'm gonna share with you how to add some texture and some fun stuff to really push your the way you feel about that subject to tell the story one thing that i didn't share with you is two things that i do i take the image click on the image click on all the other images that go with it and i go to develop module in lightroom and I click on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections which is you know your lens and your camera and it makes it all nice and pretty and then what you'll do is you will go ahead and click sync at the bottom and then just push ok and everything will be fine just automatically do a right click and send it off to Photoshop in layers. So in this first segment, we have fixed the image from here to here, and eventually we will get to here. Okay, and if you'd like to dive in and check out some more of my videos to learn about post-processing or any kind of fun tutorials about macro and landscape photography, click over here. Okay, so now again, your homework, shoot, do some basic post-processing and I will see you in two weeks. And remember, a thousand words does make a difference. Cheers!